lately I've been playing one of the coolest mapping builds that I've played in a while. No matter how many times I try to think of an awesome way to introduce this build, I don't think there's any better way to introduce this build than to actually play it for you guys. This build was brought to me by my friend Ginger. He found it and he was like, dude, this is one of the coolest things I've ever played. You have to try it. I tried it on stream a couple of times. I showed it to a couple of people that I was playing with and everybody has the very similar reaction I do of what the heck is this? What are you playing? And what in the world is going on? This is a Cyclone General's Cry Tectonic Slam blow up the entire map not give a hoot and nannies about a hoot and nanny. This build in itself, you can see we actually have like a like a, an eight modded real map is able to go into a map, gen cry, drop corpses, get the little gen cry guys, and they just they do what the gen cry guys do best. They go into a map, they hit everything in the map, they blow it up, and they can pretty much attack two, three screens over without without problem without fear now this build has been awesome it has been tons and tons of tons of fun to play i would say this is probably one of the most exciting coolest mapping builds i've played in a while outside of pretty much like you know the big tornado shot lightning arrow builds or like the penance brands and stuff like that but in terms of something a little bit different something fun to play like it pretty much takes the cake you see we had a beyond boss that just spawned there we killed him no problem and we can do all of the mapping content real easy. Even things like the Wildwood are not a problem. You can have a four, five, six, seven K juice map. We'll attempt to like get a nice juice or Wildwood here in a minute so I can showcase to you guys. But you see, you just walk into a boss room and it dies. It falls right over. This build can do things like the feared really well. All of the maps to the fear really, really well. Things I would not do, I would not do Ubers with this. I think doing Ubers with this is really painful and really hard. I don't really recommend trying to do Ubers. Ubers is just not what this build is made to do. This build is made to open up a map, go clear the map, and pretty much just kind of like blitz your maps and have a really good time. I wanted to make this more of a showcase, I think, than a build guide, just simply due to the fact that it's close to the end of the league. Some of the gear might not exist. And overall, this build has just been so fun to play. And one of the coolest things about it is after doing some testing, it's possible, assuming nothing gets too drastically changed in future leagues, something that's able to be replicated, no problem. This build doesn't really require a run heavily off of the Wildwood. You don't need to use a ton of charms to make it good. You don't need a good crazy that which was taken. Everything in this build is pretty much just things that you would find in the overall normal base game. You might have to do some like crafting to make some of the gear. You might have to win a fracture to make him, you know, make the weapon. But overall in itself, like there's nothing too crazy at all really going on with it. And you'll be able to like, if you have the funds and the resources and knowledge to do it, be able to put it together without any issue. Now, I'm not gonna go rim this map. We're just gonna take the 4,000 juice that we have, or close to five, I guess, and just kind of like go in and you can see, you know, nothing's really too much of an issue. We press up Berserk, we drop our totems, we clear the whole map. Essences are being essences because they have the Wildwood. But overall, outside of, you know, them not dying because, you know, blue juice, we can just do everything no problem. Oh, I don't have auras on. That would probably be a big thing is to turn auras on. I'm probably missing tons and tons of damage. But if you've watched my videos or my streams before, you know that me remembering to put on auras is, you know, one of the worst things. GGG, if you are watching this video, how much to have auras automatically turn on? This is an MTX. How much? I need to know. It's important. Please just tell me. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But overall, outside of like, you know, just dying to bleed. Because I don't have an actual bleed flask on. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> overall, it's been really good and a lot of fun. Also, this guy's just not dying. Welcome to the typical essence mob. This is why we do essences and not tier 16 maps. Wow, this guy, that guy just does not at all care to die. Somebody's gonna be like, you idiot. 
My plan is to showcase something really cool in terms of a mapper. I wanna show you guys the ups and the downs. And if you do choose to build this and do choose to put this together, I do need you guys to know the ups, the downs, what works, what doesn't work, what to be prepared for, what not to be prepared for. This build, like I had mentioned, is a general try tectonic slam build. Essentially, we are using Cyclone to create corpses via Desecrate. While that happens, we trigger General's Cry. General's Cry casts our main skill, which is Tectonic Slam. So you actually don't really wanna be just like cycloning straight into the monsters. You kinda of wanna just be like cycloning and actually like having the Gen Cry guys like spawn. So that's what these guys are. And they just, they'll, they'll Tectonic Slam for you, but you don't actually have to do anything. You'll have to re-summon them. You notice up here in the top left, you can see that you know, when they're summoned, when they're not summoned, you see we have six warriors right now, eight warriors, and then they just kind of just go do their thing. But you essentially just keep cycloning and doing stuff so you constantly have warriors up and they're constantly hitting. So you see like all the warriors were dead there. Now we're dead. But essentially that's what you want to do. You want to just constantly make sure that you're cycloning so that you have warriors up. You don't want to be standing still. You don't want to be standing near bosses. And one of the things to know is if you're going to play this build and you're going to look into it and you're going to try it out, it is squishy. I do not want to hide that fact. You will die if you don't play it right. You see right there, you just kind of like die to things. Overall, though, if you're going to play this build too, one of the things I want to say is this build, while it's able to hit the entire map and do a bunch of things, it really excels in certain content. That content would be Blight. I think this is one heck of a Blight build. I think this is one heck of a map and go build, like a very basic Alk and go. I wouldn't recommend this build for crazy eight mod magic find juicing wildwood shenanigans. I would recommend this, you know, I just want to farm some essences or white tier maps. I want to farm some beasts. I want to do some blights and I just kind of want to go and just have a good time. I can just pretty much just open any regular tier map. If I were to just grab, just say any like non tier map, I were to chisel it, alk it, click essences and go this does everything that I needed to do. At the end of this video, I'll include a feared showcase for you. You guys can see how it handles the feared. I did record that earlier today. It does all the bosses, all the other content really well. And you can see as long as you do not crazy content, it's just a really, really good mapper. And probably with like some more investment, maybe a better weapon, maybe overall other crazy gear. It could do more. I don't want it to do more. I don't need it to do more. This pretty much does everything that I want it to do. I would uh, I would just make sure that when you're trying to do a showcase of this, you just don't take the, uh, the less recovery mod because that mod sucks for this build. And don't do that. But even when you do take bad mods like the less recovery, you can see right away, it still does what you need it to do. You have to play a little bit more, you know, on the careful side of things. But overall, it, it's, it's really good. There's the map boss then. The gear in itself is pretty straightforward. I'll walk you guys through everything. And at any point, if you are trying to make this gear, trying to craft your own copies of this gear, get stuck, leave a comment down below, come by the Discord, ask in the crafting section. I will happily talk to you guys about the gear and walking you through how to make it. I mentioned earlier that we are using Desecrate tied to Cyclone with Awaken Cast while channeling. This also gives us flammability, infused channeling, and life tap support. Essentially what that means is that every time that I Cyclone, I'm going to cast Desecrate. Desecrate is going to leave a bunch of corpses on the floor. And then when I press General's Cry, I'm going to summon these warriors. These warriors will pretty much wake up and they'll just go Tectonic Slam everything. So we do it again. We Desecrate. We press our War Cry. All of these guys wake up and they just go do what they have to do. We're pairing this with Tectonic Slam of Cataclysm. This is that big slam that you see that's going all over the ground and doing all that damage. This is essentially a Fizz converted to Fire spell. This will deal more damage per endurance charge that we remove. So we essentially, we get up to 12 endurance charges while we're in the map and we're doing things. And this skill tied with General's Cry just does a ton and ton of damage. We have it tied with Melee Fizz, Awaken, and, or not Awaken, regular Enhance 4, General's Cry, so that General's Cry guys cast it, Endurance Charge on Melee Sun. This one because we deal more damage per endurance charge and Pulverize support. So just tons and tons and tons of damage. Since we're stacking and the main idea is to have our General's Cries guys cast Tectonic Slam and we want Endurance Charges, we're going to use the Ralakesh Boots so that even though we don't see the charges up here, the charges are always on and they pretty much always count. You can see right away that we have 104,000 armor, a bunch of resistances, and as soon as I take these boots off, 
we pretty much lose everything because we don't have the charges on anymore. So as soon as I put the boots back on, you'll notice right away all of my resistances and armor and everything goes back up to the moon. These boots we have corrupted with max endurance charges. They're about 30 divines, 40 divines uh, as of the time of recording for the boots with the endurance charges. Our boots have a cast one damage taken set up in it for Val Molten Shell, Blood and Sand, and Berserk. We pair it with a nice pair of gloves. These gloves, essentially, we needed int somewhere and accuracy. So we got accuracy fracture. We used an int essence for intelligence. And then we veiled chaos orb. So you lock suffixes, veil chaos orb, and try to unveil more crit chance and elemental damage. As far as our prefixes go, we just use the Eldritch Chaos Orbs and Eldritch Nulls and Eldritch Exalts, slam on life and armor, and then we just use Eldritch Implicits for exposure and intimidate. You can actually get a Herald of Purity effect instead of intimidate is probably better. Because we are indeed Endurance Charge stacking, we have an Endurance Charge Ring. This ring in itself is probably one of the most expensive parts of the build, unfortunately. Endurance Charge Rings... Um, at the time of recording, there's one. Because it's the end of the league, it's late, these might just not exist. You can just get less, like, there's one. There's literally one. You can get a unique ring with endurance charges and lose the Fizz's Extra and the Wed and all the other stuff. So that's a possibility, too, if you want to go look up one of the unique ones. This is why I said this is more of a build showcase more than a build guide and something to consider and look forward to possibly next league or if you have one of these rings sitting around or you know somebody with one of these rings that you can grab because these rings are so rare and so hard to find i paired it with a calandra's touch now you'll know that i crafted this with multi-mod for just a ton of resistances without this ring on my resistances are pretty poopy so i'm pretty much using this ring as a way to fix a lot of my resistances paired with the calandra's touch you can see that we just like essentially just cap off our resistances we also use the Calandra's Touch because it gives us another Endurance Charge, and I think we're at 12 Endurance Charges in a map. And that's pretty damn good. Our helmet, we get another Power Charge uh, on an Abyssus. This helmet in itself isn't really expensive. These things are like a Divine, a couple Divines. We're using the extra Power Charge just so that we can get more Critical Strike Chance on our Tectonic Slam. You see right now we're at 95.3. We take the Helm... Oh, I guess I can't take the helmet off. But anyways, <laughs> if we put the helmet back on, we're at 95. We're essentially 95%. The Assassin's Mark gives us more critical strike chance, put us at 100%. I didn't realize I was missing attributes. Our helmet has a mark on hit with Assassin's Mark. We have an Ancestral War Chief and a Life Tap Support. Ancestral War Chief is the one that allows us just to have more damage, more strike range, more everything. This skill in itself is just, just for a melee build, just 10 out of 10 can't be replaced. You don't have to get the Abyssus with the power charges. The power charges are really nice. If you don't have it and you have another helmet, you'll be, you won't be 100% crit, but you'll still be pretty high. We are pairing this build with Ashes. I know Ashes is nerfed in some sense, but in this build, Ashes is really good because we want to use the quality of the skill gems. The quality of skill gems, for example, on Tectonic Slam gives us more damage per endurance charge removed. So every time they hit, it's more damage. We go from 5% up to 18%. Same thing with our General's Cry. We just get more Summon Warriors. And that's one of the reasons why we have the Enhanced too, so that we just get more guys, more power, more everything. Same thing with the Desecrate. We just have a ton of cast speed on the Desecrate. And the Cyclone, we get a ton of movement speed. If I take off this... Can I do this? Let's see. Will this work? Oh, I can't. I don't have the end for the weapon. Uh huh. If I do this, I'm trying to see if I could showcase how important the ashes is. Yeah, we could do this. No, now we're short decks, sir. I'm trying to show how important something is. Can I? Can I do things? We're we'll just take this off for a second and do this. Problem solved. Oh, this works out too. You can see we actually lost an entire percent, a 10% crit. So if I put this back on, where'd it go? I don't know. It's gone now. We had a bunch of crit, a bunch of every. Oh, the weapon doesn't work now. Son of a gun. Yes, yeah, so we lose 10% crit. <laughs> Welcome to me being silly. Now, 
ashes is important. You see how fast we cyclone right now. If I take ashes off, you can see the difference and it's really slow. So if you just count it, it's just one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. And if I put ashes back on, it's one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and we're done. So it's it's a noticeable amount of movement speed. And like I said too, it's just more art, more uh, Mirage Warriors, more, you know, Caspi with the Desecrate. If I were to do this, you see how fast it desecrates. If I were to take this off, put this on, you could see the difference in how fast the desecrate is as well. So ashes in itself is just really powerful overall. This back before I forget. Our body armor is a little complicated. Um, you don't need the minus 15. It is a nice quality of life for the general's cry. The minus 15 on the body armor is actually not that hard to hit. What you do more or less care about is the elevated uh, elemental resistance and the elevated of the hunt. Essentially, you elevate the attack critical strike chance and you elevate the all resistance. You slam them together. And if you have an open suffix, you lock suffixes, reforge attack, and it gives you the attack skills have minus 15 total mana. So you can actually deterministically craft this. You don't need to worry about it. The additional curse in the prefix also deterministic where you lock suffixes, reforge caster, and that gives you the curse. If you have trouble with the armor, you have questions, please, by all means, leave a comment, stop by the Discord. I'll happily walk you through it again. And our weapon, our weapon is the the weapon is the hardest part about this. First off, the weapon in itself, you need the base. The base gives you a power charge and an endurance charge. Because you're endurance charge stacking, you need the extra endurance charge. I made this weapon by fracturing on tier two hybrid and then use SSs until I hit Fizz. I essentially ran out of money when I was working on it originally. I have money now, so I'd like to go back and recraft it. But essentially you want to fracture on hybrid if you can, and then just make your typical is weapon your suffixes you want the increased attack speed it's really important and then you want to ashling on your fifth mod whether it be um you know critical strike chance and stats critical strike chance and stats i think would be the best the sixth mod you could just exalt slam or craft on that's really kind of like up to you you probably want crit multi crit multi would be really good too but essentially the weapon is a pain in the butt the weapon is definitely the hard part it is a fizz based weapon right now i have a weapon mine's 935 dps these things, there's one. There's one. It's 350 divines right now. I don't even know if that's the weapon. There's none. There's five. This weapon sucks to make. I won't even like try to sugarcoat it. If you're good with crafting fizz weapons, I would say do it. One of the other options you can do is you can actually get a weapon and essence it. So you can get the base and you can essence it until you get hybrid. So if you use the Deafening Essence of Contempt for physical damage, which is what I have. And then when you hit hybrid, you can actually lock prefixes, veil, chaos orb, and unveiled fizz damage. And that's a cheaper way to do it. And then you lock prefixes, reforge speed until you get a good attack speed and then craft on the remaining affix. We use Mage Blood. Uh, at this point, like I said, this is a build that revolves around so many moving parts. Mage Blood's pretty much needed. You could try using it. I have seen people use it with Sigian off. Uh, Stygian belts, and they're really good as well. I have a mage blood. I'm going to use it. I like it a lot. If you use a Stygian flask, you want to make sure that you get flask effect and flash charges. We pair this with a diamond flask for reduced mana and crit. We have a basalt flask for armor, chance to avoid being shocked for storm shroud. Um, we have quicksilver for movement speed, increased effect and armor. And then lastly, we have a granite flask for more armor, increased effect. The suffixes on the flask can go on any of the flask. Feel free to readjust and move them away as you want. If you have a map that you struggle with lightning resistance or you want to go kill a shaper, make sure that you have an alchemist flask with for topaz or a topaz flask with increased effect. And you can get a sapphire flask depending on what boss that you're fighting. Overall, I had mentioned that the Wildwood doesn't do too much for this build. The thing that the Wildwood is doing is give you chaos resistance. If we lose the Wildwood and the Wildwood doesn't stay in the game, you're going to want to put chaos resistance. So essentially, Abyssus gives us a lot of damage. We probably want to maybe get a different helmet then. This armor gives us a lot of stats. We probably don't want to have the elevated conquest. We probably want to have chaos resistance in it. 
this boots, we'd probably want to get a better chaos resist roll. We probably want chaos resist here. If we lose the wildwood and we lose the charms, we're going to lose chaos resistance. So right now we're chaos cap. But if I remove one of these charms, I lose a ton of chaos resistance. So that's what the wildwood is doing for us. It's also giving us more area of effect for endurance charge. It's it's a lot of area of effect, but if you don't have them, it's not that crazy. Essentially, you're just using charms to cap your chaos resistance. So if we lose the wildwood, we just have to figure out how to cap our chaos resistance. The last charm slot is just life regeneration and cover the enemy in ash. This is just more regeneration and covering in ash is a lot of damage, but we can make that up in other places. We can get um, cluster jewels for that. Overall, the rest of the tree is pretty straightforward. We are taking a jug so that we can get more accuracy and attack speed per accuracy. So having a ton of accuracy is really good. We have unbreakable for our body armor is doubled and 8% of armor applies to fire, cold and lightning. We have unflinching for endurance charges and endurance charges shenanigans. And then we have unyielding for damage per endurance charge and area of effect for endurance charge. Jug is just really good, really tanky and really nice to play. We have an impossible escape for imbalanced guard. This is also a little bit pricey. This one is like, 90 divines because it's the end of the league i picked this up like weeks ago for 30. we use that so that we can get prismatic skin for all res we get soul of steel for all res we get kinetic impacts for just damage the rest of the tree pretty straightforward we come up here we have a storm shroud with corrupted blood immunity storm shroud plus the flask gives us full ailment immunity we have a cluster jewel with martial prowess overlord and weight advantage Overlord gives us more damage and fortify martial prowess just gives us attack speed accuracy and damage and weight advantage just gives us double damage. We have medium clusters with cry wolf and rattling blow cry wolf gives us exerted attack steal 30% increased damage and 20% increased total power per war cry exerted attacks have 8% chance to deal double damage and strength. And then we have another set of that over here. Our jewels here our crit multi and crit multi with fire skills and max life. So if you ideally you would like three crit multi and max life, but you can get two crit multi and max life. It works just as fine. In terms of masteries, you're going to take critical strike multiplier against uniques. You're going to take regenerate life per second. You're going to take max life. You're going to take more elemental resistances. And then we are going to take attacks with two handed deal more damage. The rest of the build is pretty straightforward. We have Sublime Vision. This gives us maximum endurance charges while we have Determination on. We come down here. We have another large cluster. We have Brutal Infamy, Martial Prowess, and Sure-Fit and Striker. This one's a little bit different. This cluster, since we don't take the back node, we don't care what the third node is as long as it's in the back. So there are a couple options that you can look for. Just double check on the trade site before you make cluster or if you're crafting your own, just double check. We take Sure-Fit and Striker for 40% increased critical strike chance and 5% chance to deal double damage. Martial prowess for attack speed, just like the other one, damage and more accuracy rating. Once again, we have another lead by example, rattling blow, rattling blow for the double damage, lead by example for when you war cry, you and nearby allies gain onslaught. This one's actually really good and the onslaught's really important. And we have another one for rattling blow, warning call, rattling blow, double damage, running theme, more damage on more damage on more damage. And we have warning call. This will gives us 25% increased armor per five power for eight seconds when you war cry. So essentially, when I press this general's cry button, my 87,000 armor goes to 98,000. And then the more power that you have, the more everything that you get. The last two jewel sockets are forbidden flame and forbidden flesh. These allocate warbringer. Earlier today, I was on stream and I looked up these forbidden flames and flushes. They didn't exist because it's the end of the league. But essentially, these will give you rage per power. So it's one of the ways that we're generating rage in this build. It's actually the only way that we're generating rage in this build. So if you don't have access to this and you want to put this together, you can actually get rage on your gloves so that you can generate rage. And then this way that you can, like, you know, have it generated that way. But otherwise, you know, the build is pretty straightforward. We have a that which was taken. This really doesn't do a whole lot. This gives us leeches instant, which is really nice. And war cries grant rage per power. If you can't get, excuse me, if you can't get the forbidden flame and the forbidden flesh, and you take this off, but you have a that which was taken with the war cry rage, you can actually do it and it gives you a little bit of rage. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. There are ways around it. You really don't need this. And I had mentioned this earlier that you don't need the Forbidden Flame and the Forbidden Flesh. It doesn't do a whole lot. 
I have it currently in my build to showcase to you guys how the interaction works when you don't have Warbringer. So you see Warbringer does the exact same thing. Warbringer puts us up to full. If I take this off and if you're playing during Affliction League or if Forbidden Flames or if the that which was taken stay and you can get one that gives you rage and you know, we'll just spend it really quick. You can use that to have a way to generate power and rage. So just something to look at and to think about and to consider. If you are playing and you do have access to that which was taken, the leech is instant is really, really, really nice. The blind is OK. The rage per power is really good. If you're going for anything and you don't want to go for the charms, I would say things like um, immune to reflect is really good. Calling strikes really good. Um, there's a lot of really good options that you can get with that, which was taken. It's really just kind of search around and see whatever. The big one though is the War Cry's Grant 4 Rage for 5 power and the Leech's Instant. Or you could just get Leech's Instant. If you have the Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh, just get Leech's Instant plus whatever else looks good. If you don't have the Forbidden Flame and Flesh, get the War Cry. The Leech one I think is pretty good and I would definitely go for the Leech if possible. And that's really it, man. That's the whole build. The whole build is just sweet. Like I said, I wouldn't bring this build to do things like Uber Shape or Uber Elder or any of the Ubers at all, but you can essentially feared farm and we're going to cut over to a clip and then you guys can see how the feared farming goes. But if you want to try this builder, you want to play it, you have questions on to craft the gear, don't hesitate to leave a like, comment, share, do all that fun stuff and join the Discord and come ask us a bunch of questions. We'll be there. But for now, friends, I'm going to leave you guys with this one and I'm off to find the next fun thing to play. Bye, friends.